this is serious. Yeah, and this information is important and people need to hear it. It's, it's phenomenal what's actually going on here. Yeah, we're living in a people farm. We're living in a people farm. I've been telling people for years. And a lot of these war zones are about destroying infrastructure and harvesting humans. That's what it's all about. And, and people just, just can't see what's going on. Go and have a look at that and have a look at what their plans are and how controlled they want things to be. And that's what all of this has been about, leading us into this. We need, we need to tear these people out of power by whatever means possible. We've got to be careful we don't move into chaos. You know, people mistake anarchy for chaos. Anarchy simply means without rules. Um, but you need to have a well-informed, well-educated population in order for any type of anarchy to work. So you need an interim system that can, you know, of people with it, that have stood strong in the resistance, who know the truth and can see the truth and who have integrity, who can maneuver us back to a point of safety where we could re-educate a lot of people. Those who are willing to be re-educated, you know, well, not, not re-educated, but educated. True education, you know, true education, education in life, education in what it means to be human. You know, education in life skills. People don't even know how to plant a garden anymore. They don't know how to do anything. They don't even no. know how to prepare food. They got to go and buy a packet of stuff from the supermarket. So, you know, we need to get these life skills back. All these life skills have been taken from us for a reason. So that all they've got to do is shut down the supply chain and that's it. You've got a mass cull. The population will do it to themselves because everybody today, they're all truckatarians. You know, they, they don't know how to grow food. They live off the food trucks. They live off the supermarkets. It doesn't matter whether you're a vegan, vegetarian, whatever you consider yourself to be. If you're not going out there and preparing it for yourself, then you're a truckatarian. And if those trucks stop flowing, which they're kind of doing with this blockade, so we've got to be careful here. I mean, the truckers have got to be careful to cut off the supply chain to the politicians and the media and the police, all those people, but make sure it keeps flowing for the people because these people don't know how to look after themselves. You know, they depend on the trucks. So we're in an interesting situation. We're right on a knife edge at the moment, and we've got to be very rational and careful and prudent about how we go forward with this and not allow, you know, emotion to take over because it's a very emotionally volatile situation that we're in. But you have an opportunity to turn this world into the golden age, to turn this world into what it should be, to what it once was. Yes. You know, I mean, you're, you, you are here in a physical 3D reality for a reason. Perhaps you should participate in this 3D reality. You exist. That may be a clue for a lot of people. The fact that you're here in 3D means maybe you should get involved and maybe this falling down of the veil and this revealing of the shadow, maybe it's time for a lot of these new age people to not stop admitting the shadows there because they go, oh, where, where energy goes, attention, where attention flows, energy goes. I'm bringing the shadow into being by looking at it and giving it power. No, you're allowing it to exist by your refusal to look at the shadow, a lot of these people. I want to keep myself in a state of a high vibration so I don't acknowledge the evil. No, the evil exists because you don't acknowledge it. And you're not in a state of high vibration. You're in a state of fear because you're refusing to look at the shadow, which is what is perpetuating the shadow. You, you, you have an inability to be able to process certain forms of light because all information is light. Even what you would call negative, bad, dark information, it's light, it's information. And when you face that and shine the light on it, the shadow flees. The shadow cannot exist in any amount of light. Now, you can take darkness into a room full of light, and it does nothing. It flees. You can take a tiny little bit of light into a room of darkness, and it reveals everything about the room. You know, that's the beauty of it. You know, when you look into the shadow of darkness, look into the mirror of darkness, it doesn't take you into the darkness. It reveals the beauty in yourself and the good in yourself and the power within yourself. So people can look at this, you know, as ascension, we have, a, we have an opportunity to ascend our consciousness within this realm, turn this into what it should be so that people don't come through after us and have to go through this suffering. You know, people who are focused on self-ascension, well, I, yeah, I want to, I'm going to ascend, keep myself in a high vibration and ascend to another realm. Like I said, you, your body's going to die to do that. You're not taking your body with you to this higher realm. We could change this world in a day.
if people wake up to themselves, put down all their division with each other. This is why I finish every every show I do with Inla Kesh, which is mine for I am another yourself. We are each other. We are simply different frequencies, different aspects of the same consciousness, looking at life through different eyes. You know, and everything we perceive about ourselves, whether it's good or bad or whatever, whatever we think the flaws we have or whatever, we have these things for a reason because that is the perspective we needed to view reality from because that perspective is needed. Otherwise, you wouldn't exist. It's what you do with that. You know, and when you, you meet other people and you can see them as yourself, simply looking at life with, from a different perspective, in a different sort of biological computer, different software installed, you know, and different, the software being their experiences that they've had along the way, you know, so all have different expect, perspectives and we can all learn from each other. And when we put down our division with each other, and stop complying with our own slavery, step into our moral compass, stop complying with anything that causes us to step outside our moral compass, and we'll change the world in a day. But people aren't prepared to do that. They want to say, oh, it's, it's these guys, and I'll hate them, and I'll blame them, and if we remove all of them, my life's going to change. No, it doesn't work that way, especially not now. Now it's all being run by the economic model. It's being run by the companies that are producing the tech who see dollar signs at the end of this tech tunnel. Now the AI is already running itself. And it's people's, um, the fact that they're kept in scarcity, kept stuck in this monetary system, and they think that if I make millions of dollars, I'm going to reach this utopia, that drives the system now. That's what drives it. And people are still using the tech, their addiction to the tech, and the dollar signs that are driving it. And people that do go through, they become billionaires, they get to this fabulous world, they get there and they go, well, there's nothing here. Well, it's just the way it was before. I've got more money. I can do more things now. But everywhere I go is the same as everywhere else. Everything's been homogenized. There's no culture left anywhere. Everywhere you go, you can find a Starbucks and a McDonald's. You can go to Tibet and find a Starbucks and a McDonald's, you know. So, you know, everywhere has been turned into the same as everywhere else. So where is this oyster? Where is this pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? Where is this incredible reality that I was told existed if I did all this stuff? See, all this is breaking down. And people are now seeing the world for what it is, seeing the lie they've been sold. You know, the, the, the breaking down of the veil, enlightenment, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult, uncomfortable process. Enlightenment is an uncomfortable process. It's a breaking down of everything you thought to be true. There's nothing, nothing to do with sitting on top of a mountain and wearing robes and glowing like people think it is. You know, it's a very, very uncomfortable space where you see reality for what it is. And that gives you the opportunity for emotional, intellectual, and spiritual ascension within the 3D realm. Ascend your mind, ascend your consciousness to the level that it should be within this vessel, and let's see what you can accomplish. Don't just give up and think, I want to ascend and leave the world. You know, it's not like that. There's a far, far greater opportunity here, I think.